In this video, this is all about men and how we can best navigate our personal relationships. I'm speaking about life partnerships, love, love relationships. There's a, I wanna give you guys just some perspective on this. Um, when something comes up as a pattern over and over again, it's that's my sign from the universe for me to to bring the idea, the concept, the situation challenge forward. And there seems to be this recurring theme that I'm hearing about men who are not showing up in their relationships. I'm probably going to do a multi-part series on this because this challenge is multifaceted. There are many reasons why a man chooses not to show up in their relationship. But the purpose of this offering for me is to provide some insight, maybe some valuable perspective on what men can do if this is you or if you know someone or maybe you can use some of this information to help you show up better in your relationship. I think with men, we we tend to respond or react to to situations in two ways. We'll either attack it or or shut down. When it comes to relationships, you know, the man is we're natural hunters and our love language for the most part is honor and respect so in the beginnings of a relationship we're trying to put our best foot forward and to to make ourselves worthy of the respect that we want from our significant other women in, in particular I'm speaking I'm speaking about heterosexual relationships that's that's what I can speak on. Um, so in these dynamics, we're putting our best foot forward to earn the honor and respect of the feminine side of the, the equation. Now, over time, what tends to happen is the work stops being done or the growth stops being had and here lies the challenges when one partner continues to evolve and the other partner particularly the man does not this presents some very interesting challenges one of which is a loss of that initial honor and respect that initially won you, the man, that relationship to begin with. Once a woman stops respecting you or loses that honor and that that reverence for you, you have some work to do. Otherwise, that's gonna that relationship and that dynamic will continue to down spiral. It's 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 a metaphysical imperative it's a masculine feminine imperative it's a relationship imperative in regards to the to the, to the masculine and feminine that that dynamic be maintained in my opinion <clears throat> because once respect and honor is lost by from the man or or by the woman, the woman will naturally start to take on more of a masculine energy. It's a weird dynamic. This is the caretaker and the need to have perpetual safety. This is the nature of the feminine. So in order to do that, once she doesn't, tr once she doesn't trust you, the man, she naturally wants to take on more, more masculine energy. So now you have two dicks in the relationship. Unless you're into that, most of, most of the time, 
that is going to present with a problem. I'm speaking metaphorically and interpersonally. As soon as the female takes on more masculine energy, problems will ensue. So now you have a quagmire. Now there's this, this constant either overt or under the radar tug of war between the couple. The man is trying to maintain his masculine status and the female, having lost respect for the man, is now not allowing him to be that masculine container for her feminine. So now it's like trying to shove a square through a circular peg. It's not gonna fit, no matter how much they bang up against each other. And the conflicts and the turmoil within relationships are that said banging. It's trying to shove that square through a circle. So how does, how do you, how does one begin to reshape themselves into the appropriate masculine container so that his feminine, his divine feminine woman can now have that safe container to, to, to be in, to lie in, to, to relax into. It all comes back to the work. It all comes back to your four principles, your physical, your mental, your emotional, your spiritual. It's your vibration. If you're stuck in victim mode, if you're stuck in your five-year-old little boy self, thinking that you're owed, you're owed X, Y, Z respect because you, you are the adult. I'm not going to say man, that people use this word very loosely. I'm going to be very con conscious about using that M-A-N word because a man, the epitome of a man is being able to be that masculine container for the divine feminine to fall into. I defy any relationship to where the woman feels safe enough to fall into a masculine container. I defy that to be an unhealthy relationship. Most of the time, those relationships are healthy. I mean, every relationship has challenges, but more often times than not, that relationship is going to be functional as opposed to dysfunctional. So, how do we create that masculine container for that divine feminine to fall into? It goes back to the work. It goes back to being honest enough with yourself to know where you're coming up short. This takes brutal honesty. This takes getting past your ego. It takes getting past your trauma. Getting past all of those things that are preventing you from operating in your in your highest power. And make no mistake about it. If a woman doesn't feel safe enough for you to fall into your masculine frame, that means you got some work to do. She's she's being a mirror for you. She's showing you where you're stuck. She's showing you the areas that you must develop and you must improve on. So take the hint. Understand the assignment. Accept the challenge. Because that is where your growth is going to come from. Regardless of what happens in that relationship that you're in. Sometimes the relationship, your both of your containers aren't ultimately compatible over a course of a, a life partnership. Maybe you guys are together to learn something from each other, but at, at either either case, take the opportunity to learn the lessons and to and to. 
get better based on the feedback that you're getting from your partner. This is not the time to shut down and run away. That's essentially just called kicking the can down the road. So real men take full responsibility for their outcomes. Real men operate at the spiritual level. And I mentioned this in my other video about spirituality. I'm not talking about religion and, 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 and kumbaya. What I'm speaking about spiritually once again is spirituality means taking responsibility for what you create in your life. So as painful to the ego as that might be, if your partner has lost respect for you and does not feel safe to allow her divine feminine to fall into your masculine container or lack thereof, you gotta look at yourself in the mirror and say, how can I be better? How can I improve this? That is, if you want the relationship to work, if you're not willing to put in the work, if you're not willing to show up, this is what I mean by show up, meaning being vulnerable, being not with anyone else at this point. This is about being vulnerable with yourself. Okay, we can put on a front and and shut down and and go into our little boy psychology to quote from the King Warrior Magician Lover book. You can get stuck in your boy psychology and let your relationships go to shit, but that's one choice. But I wanna shine some light on the longer term ramifications for doing that. You have a legacy to think about, especially if there are children involved. Because whatever you're doing in that relationship, make no mistake about it, they're mimicking what you what you're what what you're doing. They're they're downloading it into their mirror neurons. And they will remember it at the most inopportune time. And more like more than likely they will repeat it. So if you're not willing to do it for your partner, do it for your children. Because otherwise, your fuck up will live on beyond your fuckery. So think about that. You might be dead, but your, your selfishness and your lack of wanting to grow will live on in your kids and that will be your legacy. All we have at the end of the day is our legacy. Fuck possessions, fuck any of that stuff. You can't take any of that stuff with you. The only thing that stays behind is how we lived, how we treat people, and what we do. Yes, you know, go after your, get your bags, get your, make your accomplishment, build your business. I'm right there with you, but at, at the end of the day, it's about how you treat people and how you live your life and how you how you show up in the world. So start putting in the work, man. You're here for a reason. If you're alive in a human body, that means you survived a lot of trials and tribulations and tests to be here. Without getting too spiritual and too woo-woo, whatever you're whatever your religious or, or philosophical connotations is, you're a soul occupying a body. And when you die, that soul won't be in this body. So the fact that your, your soul is occupying a human body meant that you're here for a purpose. And I guarantee you it wasn't to be an asshole or a little boy within an adult relationship. So you think about that. That woman you with, as much as she doesn't respect you and as much as she might think you're a punk right now, is still waiting for you to show up. 
if she's still with you and hasn't left you yet, that means she's still waiting for you to show up. So you still, there's still hope. The game can still be won because when she walks out the door, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother set of challenges that you're gonna have to negotiate and navigate. So figure out who you wanna be, my friend. It all comes, it all comes down to personal development. Get yourself in shape. Start feeling good about yourself. If you're feeling good about yourself, it's a foregone conclusion that she's gonna feel good about you as well. Because that's what it boils down to. You're not showing up because you don't feel good about yourself. So start there. Create some order to your universe. Be mindful of the clean, clean, cleanliness. I got wrenched lips today. Cleanliness of your surroundings. Clean up. Clean yourself up. Get a haircut. Stay hydrated. Get back to the basics. I would assume that if you're having these struggles, you may have wandered off the path or wandered off your particular purpose. By taking care of yourself, you immediately can start to get yourself back on purpose, whatever that may be. It's funny how that happens. If you're in shape, if you're feeling good, if you have energy, if you have high vibration because you're exercising and you're you're putting that energy into your in your into your self-care, people will notice. Health and vitality is just like a cold or a virus. You can catch vitality from people. I want you to start infecting your woman with vitality and she will feel it and start to respect you for having done so. And now you got something. If you can do that, you can turn Sorry, I'm in North Carolina where no one seems to understand the difference between uh, a safe driving distance and basically going bumper to bumper. So you get to, you get to see me road rage a little bit. Anywho, that's how it works, man. Start with yourself. and watch the magic happen. But again, if she's still with you, you got a shot. But you have to make a decision. Number one, do you wanna be in the relationship? If that's, that's the first question. If you do wanna be in a relationship, man up and start putting in the work to make it functional, especially if you have kids involved. They don't need to see your bullshit. They need to see two parents who love and respect each other at minimum. They don't, it's not about what you say. It's the energy and the vibration in the home. You, if you look, think back about, think back on how you, how you felt and perceived your home and your parents. It wasn't what they said. It was what, it was the vibration that they were emitting. It was their attitude. It was, it was the under the radar base frequency is what I call it. That was in the home that you most remember. Your kids are picking up the same vibe or anyone who's in your house is on that same vibe. So you think about that when you think you're hiding and running away to avoid. You ain't avoiding anything, dude. You're making it worse by avoiding, especially as a man. So you think about that. It's really important. You know, life is too short to be playing small especially in this area of your life. So you think about legacy when you decide to not show up for your other half and especially if you have kids involved. Don't be a schmuck. If you need help, if you know you need to acquire certain skill sets, if you're aware that you lack 
the tools, the emotional tools and the coping tools to navigate certain aspects of your relationship, what do I mean? If you know you have an anger problem, start studying on how to balance that out. If you know you, you have a tendency to shut down and, and retreat and hide and, and, and stonewall, find tools to get that. At the, bit, at the end of the day, it's all about skill sets, just like anything else. Your results in any part of your life is going to be directly correlated to your skill sets and the knowledge, wisdom, and experience that you have at any given time for any given situation. Take all the emotion out of it. Just think of it as a skill set. If you find yourself repeating the same pattern over and over again and it's not serving you, you're not a bad person. You're just lacking the skill sets. You're lacking the tools, like in mechanics. If I have, if I, if I have to, you know, if I have to break a, a bolt that's 19 millimeters and I have a 15, I'm not breaking that bolt because I have the wrong tool. I have the wrong part. So it has no, so there's no judgment about it. It's strictly skill sets. So I want you to think about it that way when you start to get all in your feelings about X, Y, and Z. And if your woman's not respecting you, just think, hey, I don't have the skill sets yet for her to, re, to, to, to get regain the respect from her. I haven't learned that. I don't have that tool yet. I don't have that acquisition tool yet, but I will have it. This is how you can shift your framework and shift your perspective. Detach from the fact that you fucked up. You can't undo that. That's not who you are. That's what you did. What's who you are is how you choose to move forward. If you don't rewrite that story, that's who you are. That's what, that's what you're gonna be remembered by. But now that you have some a better understanding, you can do better. So acquire the tools. Start with your vitality and vibration. And as you feel better, you will think better. And as you, as you think better, you will think more clearly. And as you think more clearly, you will then be able to access your higher faculties. As Bob Proctor says, your higher faculties are creativity, insight, intuition. Those are the things that allow you to, to naturally acquire the resources that you'll need to reestablish the, the, the goodness, the vitality, the, the passion in your relationship and in your life. You don't need to, you know, at this point, if you, once you understand that, the tools will, the tools will come to you because that's what happens. If you start, once you start to feel better, your consciousness automatically expands. And that's where you can start to naturally acquire the skill sets and the tools and the, and the right people to help you become the best version of yourself. Because make no mistake about it, you're not, you're not on an island all by yourself. We need each other. That's what we're here for. If you think you're on an island all by yourself, you're isolating yourself. At every level, an isolated being is dangerous. What's a cancer cell? It's an isolated cell that is, that is out of harmony with the healthy cells in the body. So on that level, that thinking, it's ill thinking. So stop that. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help. Hopefully this video will be the first step in you getting that help. We'll see you in the next one.